Hi there! I thought I'd do a little one year later video on the how to load match winning ammo with Marcus Olsson. And uh, as you can see here, there's been some slight changes uh, in my gear. I have uh, borrowed, actually, I didn't buy it, uh, a Dillon 650 from a good friend of mine. And uh, he wasn't using it, and I gave him a bottle of whiskey, and well, here it is, until he wants it back. <laughs> but uh, it sure helped with the with the uh, reloading process for practice ammo. I just really do this whole thing all automated with the uh, case feeding system and everything. Uh, the only thing I do by hand is put these little bullets uh, inside the case over here. And other than that, I just crank the handle. And it's been... Well, it shoots good enough. I mean, it's it's... The Bowtail hollow point is not very sensitive to seat and death or anything at all. It's probably the most insensitive bullet I've ever had. So it works perfectly good in any progressive type of loading system. And uh, all the powder came from the powder dispenser into Dillon. And uh, it's good enough. I mean, I, I practice regularly out to 500 meters with this and I... I can't blame any misses on it. I just recently did a match with, or a small club match thingy, where we did like F class type of, but I don't know, unlimited bench I don't know what you want to call it. The smallest group at 500 meters. And the smallest one I shot was like 60 millimeters at 500, which is, you know, I'm perfectly happy with that. Average, I'd say I've landed around 80, but I mean, what the hell, it's still an ammo and I, I'm not sure I'll shoot any better by myself, but. When it comes to match ammo, I've uh, made some small adjustments there. I uh, I actually got went and bought myself an annealing machine, the amp annealer, and uh, I don't. I know I said I don't ever anneal and I don't see the need for it after a match, sitting in the car talking to a friend of mine who is uh, not not afraid to buy reloading equipment, if you put it that way. Uh, he talked to me a lot that there's, you know, there's an upcoming world championship and uh, I should step up my game a little bit if I want to, you know, compete with the best in the world. And I sat there and thought to myself, if I'm spending all that money on going places shooting and shooting matches, buying a custom gun and everything, why shouldn't I anneal? Or why shouldn't I try to see the advantages of it? And uh, truth be told, what I noticed at first was, you know, I got a decrease in ES. The SD were about the same, but the every other, you know, the extreme spread were a bit, a little bit more even. Uh, I'll show you a little film of that. I, it's in Swedish. I got it on my phone, so I'll put it here or something. I don't know. And um, <coughs> there was a, quite a, I went from like five meters a second over a 10 shot string to one. Well, that's probably not, you know, I'm probably not going to get one meter a second on every single 10-shot string, but that showed that there's a difference there. But it's, it's a little bit of peace of mind. But and the, before that, I ended up getting an Arbor Press uh, with the force pack dial indicator. That's actually before I got the annealing machine and, uh, well, I got the normal Lee Wilson with the micrometer. But what I started noticing with the force pack was that I had... My neck tension was not very consistent uh, once I started getting up in multiple firings. I didn't see it on my groups and I didn't really notice. You know, you could tell it a little bit on the extreme spread when I started getting a few that were hard. They were going faster. Um, so after I started annealing, that almost completely, <laughs> completely got just disappeared. Uh, so it's, you know, it serves a purpose, but for precision rifle shooting, I mean, it's, you know, most of the things up here anyway. And other than that, for my match ammo now, I since I run a Dillon for sizing all my brass, I figured why not go with an expander mandrel type of thing that I've seen a lot of guys use. And uh, I know Scott Saturday talked to me about this uh, quite a while ago, actually. And I didn't have a progressive press, so I did not exactly feel like doing that, uh, running the case through the same press twice. So now what I do when I size my match brass, I run a bushing, that's slightly smaller than the one I use for practice ammo, and I use this expander mandrel to just size it up from the inside. And I still use the, this one is uh, custom from my gunsmith, and the same sizing dive I've had now for a year from Fabian. 
it's fucking phenomenal. Uh, you know, a uh, sizing die that's custom and cut after your chamber. Uh, it's, you know, it's, there's no stress on the brass at all. That combined with annealing and everything, I mean, this thing runs as smooth as butter. butter. <laughs> but the whole thing is getting one in E extreme spread. When I did that test, is I ran an expander mandrel and I got five in ES. And then I run the same thing, expander mandrel annealing, and I got one in ES. So that's the whole process. I didn't single out anything. They all, you know, I just did 10 and then I did another 10. Uh, same charge weight, same seating depth, everything. So, I mean, it did a little bit of difference. But other than that, I don't think I've changed that much. Oh, I bought a wet tumbler. A lot of guys will say, oh, when are you going to join the dark side and buy a wet tumbler? Well, I sort of did. Uh, I couldn't really be bothered with it in the whole, you know, corn cob dust everywhere. So I bought a wet tumbler. Just a Frankfurt Arsenal one, uh, the big one. Uh, run them maybe there. One, I just still only tumble when they're really, really dirty. I don't do it every time. Now it's springtime. It's the whole range is a piece of mud, so it's probably a bit more often than I'm going to do during summertime. But yeah, so um, I think that's the only changes I've done since last year. Well, it's quite a few actually. But anyway, figured I'd do this video since it's raining outside, as per usual in Sweden. Um, and uh, yeah, take care and see you on the range.